simulation equipment costs a lot of money. And so we're stuck in simulation trying to figure out how do we sustain $700,000 mannequins? How do you sustain uh, uh, recording capture products that cost a quarter million dollars every four years to re-up because now we're going into cloud-based versus on-premise things. Um, how do you continue to manage inventory and medication products that are continuing to grow and change and cost more? Not one of those things has to ha is a problem in VR. And so to me, I, I see the next iteration of VR being the sustainable way to do what we're doing without having to provide so much workforce and con development and continuing education that we have some sort of ROI that allows us to keep that sim center open. VR can do that in a flash at a fraction of the cost. And, and I really do believe that's where we will thrive and strive with VR is the fact that I don't have to come up with $150,000 by May of next year to keep that room going. I can do that. And if I had $150,000, I'd have 70 of those rooms in VR. You can't just drop your kids off at daycare or at simulation and expect them to learn. It has to be facilitated. Uh, I've, I've been doing my master's for the last couple of years and, and the facilitation is truly the key. For us, we had to start slow. We only had a few headsets. So it wasn't like we could put 30 people into a, a VR and, and watch them roll with that. Each one of them can have independent journeys and then they can have journeys together. And that also comes back to what you built within a catechist, allowing them to go on the solo missions versus them sliding together and coming together with, with the larger group. The conversations are exactly what you would expect. In a solo mission, you're getting their own perspective and everybody else is learning from that singular perspective. But when they come together, they start thinking about what the other ones are seeing and feeling. The conversations that they're having change their mind and it changes the entire simulation. So again, one scene, can provide for us half a dozen to a dozen simulations. For us, it was a very invested technology savvy dean, um, Dean Christine Rutherford, that was a dean for the college the past 10, 12 years before retiring a couple of years ago. She really promoted a lot of this. She was the one that kind of kickstarted it and said, yes, I wanna see this go. We brought it into a classroom, kind of a modern day classroom that had 36 computers in it. And I took one of those six tables with six computers. I took one computer away from each table and added it at the very end of the table, this virtual reality setup. The reason I did it in this classroom was because we were able to then broadcast at the end of each of those six tables was a 50 inch monitor. And so the people that weren't in the headset could still see what was going on because it was being broadcast to that monitor. What I did is I found carts that could hold a desktop, a monitor, a headset in a basket. Um, it would be easier to wireless or to wire connect. It was almost like I was building a docking station for this setup where it would be like one grab, one plug, plug it into the wall, grab the ethernet, make sure it's plugged in and now you can go. And so we were able to, to bring these carts down the hall and bring it to a different department. That's how I started getting buy-in from other and collaborations from other departments, even ones outside of our college um, like College of Science, Engineering, and Technology, who wanted to start building and, and helping us with some of this as well. And if we don't sit here and continue to innovate while we're using the product, not only will we be losing years while we're doing that, but we're not going to get to the innovation part of it because there just wasn't enough time in the seat kind of thing. And then you have to think of what makes this better. And then that step alone will help every iteration along the way. And, and that is simulation to me. We do high risk things in, in very low occurrence areas. You know, uh, you're, you don't have the time to sit in a hospital and you might not ever see an opportunity for a surgeon to give you this kind of talk or to do these types of things. That's where VR, that's where simulation really thrive is that we can play that over and over and over again until you get comfortable with it and get better at it. So that the moment that it actually counts, you've already done that a few times and you're thinking about what's the next step for it. So the students see this as Novelty at first, as you would think with most students who have never been in a headset, they see it as, wow, this is incredible. The fact that I can look and feel, um, they actually have, you no longer have to build up the momentum like you would in a simulation. You don't have to pre-brief near as much because the feels are all there right when they're into the headsets. Um, but a lot of the feedback they got were, that we got from them were conversations they never thought they would have, triggers that they would have never expected even if they were in the real world. Um, the ability to 
do something and then redo something was something that I thought a student had mentioned several times. And I was like, I never really thought of it like that. But when we started building in like the multiple choice triggers or how you would re you help somebody who has fallen, we did a lightning strike scene with you guys where a lightning strike hit a stadium and, and the students would come back from that going, I want to do it again. I, I want to think about it from a different way. I, I want to get better at this immediately, but then I want to think about how I'm going to help this person first versus helping them. Um, their mind started working analytically. And so <laughs> when you think of hierarchies of learning, you know, this isn't just rhetoric. This isn't just us saying, this is what you need to learn. You read it, you learn it, you figure it out. This was them analyzing. This was the highest levels of learning because they didn't need to know the terminology. They already had that. They had taken the course. They had been two months into the course before they experienced the VR. So they had the vocabulary to talk about these things. What they didn't have was the ability to engage their mind that said, take this to the next level. How would you react to this? He just got them to the point where in education, we've been trying to make people go the whole time. And a PowerPoint just doesn't do that. VR is taking our level of thinking to a new norm. And kids are coming in with this expectation of, I know how to use Google. I don't need to memorize anything. But what we need to teach them is that they do need to know the process of how to understand how to learn so that they can teach themselves and be consummate learners as they're moving forward. VR does it like that. I mean, VR just snaps you into it because you're in this, you're in the journey. You can take that as far as you want. Now you're not limited by anybody in the class and you're not even limited by the faculty anymore. As long as they're facilitating your journey to get you to the point where you want it. the students reaction to it really ignited me to say, this is working. It never worked for us to go to some of the VR systems that were cataloged that says, here's, pre-scripted scenarios, you buy these and you use these. That never worked for us because to me, we were never developing towards either the unique patterns that they were teaching with and the content that we we're teaching with, or some things that we had never thought about that scenarios will never fit. And then we started getting further and further down the road and we were like, okay, what about lightning strikes? What about bomb threats? What about how to evacuate people using the ambulance? They couldn't portray something like that because you can't, you can't manipulate U.S. Bank Stadium into doing that. And I think it'd be really hard to bring up mannequins up there and have them fall over when you pretend a lightning strike happened. You just couldn't do that. It's a fantastic effort, John, that we're gonna be bringing in continuing education from our police departments, our fire departments, and our city workers to go through that same VR with our students. And so, like I said before, it takes one piece of content, but it allows us to come at it from 15 different views. You guys are fabulous at what you do within the technology, but your your true focal point is within healthcare, and it's it's within how we're helping people and, and making those things. If that wasn't the premise of what you're doing, I'm not sure how we make the positive innovations moving forward. If the foundational beliefs aren't that we're trying to actually help or fix problems and make them better and easier for the future.